Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting special episode of Paranormal, the New Normal. Yeah, that's right. Another week and another one-on-one -on -one bracket. And this one, this one, I have been looking forward to for some time because I've wanted to touch this one for so long. It's literally been like seven months since I made it, and now I finally get to run it with somebody, and it's going to be a fun one. I guarantee you that. But let me introduce my guest first, and I'll get to the bracket we're doing. My guest tonight is also a first-timer on this show, so always a lot of first-timing tonight. I feel like I'm in high school again. <laughs> and my, my guest tonight, he is the host of the Group Therapy Podcast. He goes by the moniker Captain Cartoon. Yeah. But welcome the Captain Paul Lee to the show, everybody. Glad to have him on tonight. I'm glad to be here. Thank you all for inviting me. I appreciate it. It's gonna be fun. And what's going on, Lonnie? Thank you for watching as always, buddy. Glad to. I think I think you'll like this bracket, Lonnie. I think you will. But this seems like your kind of topic. It goes with the greenery. But then <laughs> that's right, folks. The topic we are doing tonight is the top forty TV aliens living among humans bracket. So lots of. Which is perfect for a Captain Cartoon, because lots of cartoons in this, as well as some live-action shows as well, but a lot of cartoons in this. So, we gotta love it, and I mean, of course, there's gonna be a lot of the sci-fi shows on as well here, so let's good mix of everything, and we're gonna have some fun with it, and just see how it goes, and uh, let's jump right let's jump right into it, because you know what? Alright, let's go. This first matchup, and as, as I always say, I did not make these matchups. They are generated by where they were in the ranking. So I hate this first matchup already with a passion. <laughs> From when I looked at it, I looked at it earlier today, the first time in months, and I was like, oh, fuck me. Why? <laughs> but the first matchup is the lowest ranked aliens on this bracket. Number 40, the Moonanites from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And they are going against number 20 ranked. Nibbler from Futurama. Oh, geez. You see why I hate this first matchup. <laughs> yeah, as, as, as much as I, I love Futurama, I I tend to forget Nibbler's even there. Even though it's Frank Welker. Um, I, I, and the Moon Knights, I do like Aqua Teen, but uh, I, I'm going to have to say Nibbler just for the sake that he's voiced by Frank Megatron Welker. Frank Freddy Wilker. Yeah. That's 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 gonna be my answer for that one. Cause I I do love I do love Futurama more than than Aqua Teen, so we'll go with that. It's gonna be Nibbler. I mean, how can you not go with the alien that fools humans into thinking he's just an adorable house pet when really he's a intelligent species that has he's saved the earth, earth on numerous yeah. occasions? <laughs> like uh, I mean, the Moon Knights are freaking classic, and they're only they're only a couple episodes of Aqua Teen, but they're one of the they're one of the most comical villains in that show, and they're freaking hilarious, and I love them. I I almost gave it to them just because of that really bad marketing s scheme that the Cartoon Network had, where they put the Moon Knights on all the lights all over what was it like uh, <coughs> Portland, Oregon, or something like that. Yeah, Portland. But, but, but yeah. But no, I, I I have to say Nibbler because, like I said, you, you can't go wrong with Nibbler. So <laughs> you really can't. I mean, Nibbler's classic for the last twenty five years of my life. I've been. Oh yeah. Watch, I love the I love the I love the episodes where he actually talks. Like oh uh, yes, because he's got that deep voice, and he's like. <laughs> I never knew that was I never knew that was the voice of Megatron either. So that's freaking awesome. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Frank, Frank, but, well, Frank Wilker does the voice of like everything. So yeah. The, the Great Kazoo? I don't know if he's on this, Lonnie. He might be. He might be. Could be. Actually, I would. He should be. If he's not, he I might have to fucking add, add him at some point. But um, yeah, yeah. I'll look into that. But to face Nibbler in the next round, you are going to have to choose between two. Well, actually, two live action shows. I believe I'm not positive about the one, but it's number thirty nine ranked. And folks, I may butcher some of these names. Just saying, they're alien names. I may butcher some of them. But it's number 39, Danan from Earth Final Conflict, going against number 19, Anna from V. I'm going to have to go with uh, Anna from V because 
one as Marina Baccarin, and she's like smoking hot. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, Earth Final Conflict, I think I only watched that a handful of times. So we're, we're going to have to go with Anna from V. It, 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 to be honest, if the if the answers if the, if the question is going to be V versus anything else, it's probably going to be V because I love, I even like the reboot, so I I can't I can't say nothing there, and that's a great Aliens Among Humans, so. Yeah, I mean, I never even heard I never even heard of Earth Final Conflict, so I mean I can't say anything about that show, but. Isn't Earth Final Conflict? Isn't that a, isn't that a Gene Roddenberry show too? Because I think it came out Sounds like it would be. as Andromeda, I believe. It was in syndication. I, I, I The only reason I watched it because uh, it was on because I had a job where I could watch TV and it was on. So. <laughs> uh, it, it was Gene Roddenberry created by. Yeah, okay. Oh, apparently it's on Tubi if anybody wants to watch it. But yeah, There we go. Now I'll go back and rewatch it and be like, oh, okay. It's still V. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, V, the original show about reptilians. Who the hell doesn't love that? So, <laughs> but well, that means you're going for uh, your second round matchup to be interesting there, but we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> the next matchup, and I promise I'm going to butcher this first name, maybe both these, but the first name especially because it's another live action matchup. It's number 38. Oh, God. Sikozu Zvala Shanti Sugasu Shanu from Farscape. I might butcher that name horribly, just saying. But. Uh, S5, I guess. But, and they are going against number 18, Jadzia Dox from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Dang. Okay. Um, I, I'm, was it, it's, so I think her, she shortens her name down to like Chani uh, or something like that. Uh, but I, I'm going to go. Um, Terry Farrell, I like Terry Farrell, but I am more of a Farscape fan than I am a DS9 fan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the DS9. I'm not the DS9, the Farscape over the DS9. So and uh now now now, now I have to go and uh, don the glasses and look that one up because that one's gonna bother me so I can see who that is. Because I've I'm over the years I've met almost everybody from Farscape. So Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do a lot of, uh, <laughs> they do a lot of, if I'm not mistaken, they do a lot of cons. Yeah, well, they, they used to, like, the, the, like, the main, main cast doesn't do much, um, yeah, so Claudia Black, yeah, okay, yeah, she's, yeah, or no, uh, okay, so, oh, no, uh, Gigi Edgley, yeah, yep, yep, I'm gonna go with, yep, that's my, that's my final answer. <laughs> All right. It's like, uh, uh, was it how to be? A, how, what, do you want to be a millionaire? Just that's my final answer. <laughs> Far, so Farscape gets the win. Farscape Ooh. gets the win there. I have a feeling a lot of Trekkies are going to be getting pissed off tonight. I just have a feeling, but we'll see. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of Star Trek characters in here, so oh, we'll oh, definitely oh, be. If, if you start getting into this, the the, I, I absolutely love Star Trek: uh, uh, Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks right now. Those are two of my favorite shows on TV. So. Uh, strange new world, I can't say, but and apparently Lonnie agrees. Yeah, Farscape definitely yep. the pick. Farscape. But there we go, well, that means that uh, this one from Farscape, I'm not pronouncing it again, uh, um, is going to be facing either number thirty-seven, The Silence, and I didn't write what show that's from. I want to say Doctor Who, but Doctor I could be Who. wrong. Doctor Who. Okay, I thought I thought I thought so. Um, and it's because I am a Whovian, but it's going against a hard one. Number 17 ranked Worf from Star Trek The Next Generation. Worf. Worf. <laughs> Worf is one of the best. Um, what was it? Uh, my son puts it. He's the uh, the biggest of the badasses, but yet he gets his ass kicked and everything. <laughs> so you got to love Worf. And uh, Michael Dorn's a cool guy. I've only met him once, but yeah, he was cool when I met him. So Yeah, I... I I saw him on some TV show doing a guest thing, and it was hilarious. But um, I forget what it was. Uh, well, we're going to have Star Trek versus Farscape in round two, and that's going to be interesting. Well, Star Trek TNG, I should say. I mean, because 
TNG is way more loved than Deep Space Nine ever was. So, yeah. But that means, oh, speaking of Deep Space Nine, <laughs> so the next matchup, you have number 36. Oh, related to the original other Deep Space Nine character, apparently. Esri Dox from Star Trek Deep Space Nine going against a non space show. Number 16, Isabel Evans from Roswell. Well, uh, I would go with the other Dax because I have never watched Roswell. So I could not tell you on that one at all. Ah, uh, it depends. I, I, yeah, I, I, I can't say I never watched it. I watched like the first handful of episodes and I couldn't get into it. Well, she was on the... Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh, yeah, she was on the... Uh... Original, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never watched. I never. I never watched the original. I watched the uh, reboot that CW did. That was actually pretty good. Pretty good. Interesting storylines. Yeah, I, I just it wasn't a show that I got into because I was watching all those other teen supernatural dramas at that time. So I was watching Angel and Buffy and Roswell for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a reason it didn't last long. But uh, I mean, I well, I only watched the reboot because you know paranormal podcaster, and that was. I had to watch it. Oh, yeah. And it, some big actors and actresses in that reboot. So, definitely a fun watch. But, and a sexy watch in some of those episodes. Ooh, it's <laughs> CW. They, they do things right. Oh. But that means Deep Space Nine is going to be facing either number 35, Uncle Martin from My Favorite Martian, or number 15, Seven of Nine from Star Trek Voyager. Ah, oh, geez. Um, I love Uncle Martin from the move from the TV series, not so much the movie. Uh, but you know, she is uh, seven to nine. Uh, is is stupid hot, and then she's also great in Picard. Um, was wasn't Uncle Martin in the movie Christopher Lloyd? Yeah. Oh, okay, I, yeah. I'm more of a was it was it Ray Wise? No, uh, um, not Ray Wise. Um, God dang it. I, it was Bill Bixby and I draw a blank. God, um, that's my phone. Tim O'Hara. Yeah, yeah. And, oh no, that, that, was, that was Bill Bixby character. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Wa Ray Walston. Ray, Ray Walston. Walston. Yes, yes. Ray Walston. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, I I love this show, but um. Uh, yes. Let's go sure. with. Let's go seven to nine. Ah, let's just go seven to nine. Because I, I, I can still go back and rewatch uh, some uh, Voyager and some uh, Picard, and I have not sat down and watched my favorite Martian in twenty some years. So, yeah, the TV show My Favorite Martian is way before my time, but the movie I think I saw once or twice when I was a kid, but. I never actually sat and watched the old ass TV show, but I watched the old ass TV show in the summer because it was uh, when I was a kid. It was on um, in the afternoon. Syndic so. Syndic good, old, good old syndication. Yep, but good old syndication. That's right. That's right. That's how, that's how I watched a lot of shows on Nick and Night back in the day. But that means it will be us. It will be a trekky nightmare matchup in the next round. But <laughs> that means. We have to, we actually have a couple matchups here that have no Star Trek characters in them, so that's going to be a nice change of pace. And well, similar show, but it's number thirty-four, TLC from Stargate SG One, or number fourteen, Dick Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun. Oh God, uh, Dick Solomon, Dick Solomon, easy peasy, because he's John Lithgow was great in that as Dick Solomon. And uh, actually, all three, all four of them, Tom, Dick, Harry, and Sally. Yeah, I mean, The Rock from the Sun, the Rock from the Sun was a hilarious show. And oh, I the, funny. John Lithgow's amazing in any sitcom he's in. John Lithgow's amazing. So, mm -hmm. always. I, I like Teal. Well, I, I do love Stargate SG1. Uh, Christopher Judge is great, but John Lithgow, hands down. Easy peasy. <laughs> all right, well. For this next matchup, we have another comedy versus drama matchup, and it's number thirty-three ranked Bell Dark Conehead from Saturday Night Live fame, and of course the Coneheads fame, and going against number thirteen 
Aaron's son from Farscape. Oh, God damn. I have the biggest crush on Claudia Black, so we're going to go with her. As much as I love Dan Aykroyd, um, I, yet again, go Farscape. I absolutely love Farscape. Uh, Coneheads is... Uh, the movie wasn't very good. The Saturday Night Live bits were funny, but I think there's just more to the uh, Farscape. So I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, yep. I... My dad was the biggest SNL fan, so I grew up watching the Cornheads movie and like constantly. And I freaking love Chris Farley in that movie. Love him. He he is great in that movie, but uh, oh, but wow. yeah, Dan Aykroyd's character is like when he's on screen by himself or with his wife. It's kind of like get to the scene with the daughters and Chris Farley. Come on, that's what I want to see. But yeah. he, he he's he's funny. But I I'm I like I said I'm more Farscape. I love me some Farscape and uh uh. uh Claudia Black is is I like her a lot. <laughs> well, for your next matchup, you're gonna love this one. Okay, it's a it's it's a drama show versus a animated show. Okay, and okay. number thirty two ranked, Elim Garak from Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, going against number twelve, Roger from American Dad. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to go Roger from American Dad just because my son loves Family Guy and it's completely inappropriate for him to watch. But yes, I'm going to go with Family or, uh, oh. American Dad, Roger. Uh, yeah, because if I remember right, he's the um, uh, isn't he the uh, uh, in uh, the Cardassian, if I remember right, on Star Trek? He... I am not 100% sure. I Star Trek, I've only seen like the original series, and I've watched like some of the newer stuff, but I've never seen like a lot of the spinoffs. I've consumed it all, but I'm an old man, so I get to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, a, a lot of it was before my time, and my mm -hmm. dad was not was not really a Star Trek fan. Really, he was more of a mm -hmm. Star Wars fan. So I fell in that fan base. <laughs> and Amanda agreed with you and said Roger from American Dad, of course, because yep. I, I mean, if you didn't pick Roger from American Dad, I might have had to cry, but I might have had to. Because yeah. Roger is one of the best characters ever. When he puts on that Kevin Bacon nose and does the footloose dance in the middle of the street, freaking every time I see it, I die laughing. So, and I brought it up on so many. I brought it up on so many podcasts before when we're talking when they're talking about Kevin Bacon. So, uh, well, your next matchup. Once again, this is gonna be a tough one. And oh, it might make for a really tough second round matchup if it goes the way I think it might. But it's number thirty one ranked Diana from V. Okay. Versus number 11, the infamous Alf. Oh, god dang. Um, I, I like Alf, but I love V. Um, so Diana, it's going to be Diana. So, oh, oh. he I, eats I, cats. I, Come on, <laughs> I, 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 I like Alf, but man, I like I said, I love V, and I can't. It's it's a uh, it, it. This goes to you talk about Star Wars and Star Trek. I love Star Wars. I like Star Trek. That's where we're yep. at. I love that's the, that. I like. We're Alf. the same. Yep. Wow. All right. Well, we're the same. We're, we're the same with Star Wars and Star Trek. Okay. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch Alf than V personally because I like a good old fashioned sitcom like that. And Alf was fucking hilarious. Oh yeah, but it's it's a uh, V caught me at the right time because I watched that when it came out on TV. And, yeah. Uh, I was. 10 i think when it dropped and it caught me right at the right time and man when she takes that guinea pig and like swallows it and her neck swells up and the makeup wasn't great but it looked cool when you're you know 10 years old in the 80s when they peel their faces off and and uh, yet again uh 10 year old paul had a huge crush on diana so i can't say that oh yeah so <laughs> yeah well i mean I did have a crush uh, on my daughter on Alf though when I was the same oh, age, so that doesn't. I can see, I got, I, I can see that. I could definitely see that. Don't don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. And uh, Amanda, Amanda would have went with Alf as well, but yeah. I think most, I think a majority of people would have got one with Alf just because it's Alf. But yeah, I mean, but he's also he's only ranked number eleven. He's not even in the top ten. So nope. let's just see where that goes. Okay. Oh, and actually, oh, uh, Lonnie, if you're still watching, you'll be happy in a, in a few matchups. Just saying. But uh, the next matchup, and I. Fuck, why is it the first matchups in the, on both sides of these I freaking hate? But 
It's number 30, The Master from Doctor Who. Okay. And just for all Doctor Who characters, we are not giving particular actors. It's just the character overall. But because there's too many choices in some of these. But yeah. and going against number 10, Zoidberg from Futurama. Zoidberg, you know. Um, it depends on which. Uh, see, that's that's a tough one because it depends on which version of the master. Uh, does that count, uh, Missy? No. Does that because Missy's a master, but she goes by Missy. Does that count? I don't know, but there's so I many bad seen. versions of the master out there. But there's only one good Zoidberg. So we're going uh, with Zoidberg. <laughs> as much as I, I love mean, that. I I would be conflicted in that as. Very much so, because I mean, if it's if if we're talking OG Master from like Christopher Hartnett, like first Doctor Who incarnation, like or I got I think I butchered that name, but I freaking I love the first, second, third Doctor, and like the my, the Master that they all faced was an amazing actor. So yeah, he he, he was really good. I'm I'm a I'm a fourth Doctor guy. I love Tom Baker. That's the one I grew up uh, on. So, Tom, uh, ba he's. Too hippie-ish for me in a way. Like, See, it, it, I, I don't, I, I, I don't want to. Uh, how old are you? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. I'm gonna be fifty. But uh, yeah. um, I. So you, you were alive for almost all of Doctor Who's existence except for ten years of it. Of it so. And I watched it on uh, on PBS late night on BBC on PBS on uh, Saturdays. I watched Doctor Who, Avengers, and. Um, uh, the other one was a mix, so it would show like Blake Seven and like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the first one I, I started liking was uh, uh, Tom Baker, and then mm. I learned about the other ones later. So, but, uh, I I didn't watch any of them live because when I was a kid, Doctor Who wasn't a thing anymore. It kind of was on that hiatus period yeah. for a, yeah. a good decade. Well, so the thing I. I by the time I watched it, it was in it was reruns that we were getting here in America. So Tom Baker hadn't been a doctor because uh, actually by the time I started watching it, so this is probably like ninety. I uh, don't think Doctor Who was even on the air. In it like, wasn't that that that, that was when they were yeah. doing like the they were doing TV movies like every couple of years. But that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's where I was. But I, I was watching them on repeats on on PBS late night. So. See, I start I start getting them on Netflix net Netflix discs because I just wanted to watch Doctor Who because I always heard how amazing a series it was. Oh, yeah. And I start like, and it it was actually weird, funny because at the time I started watching it, you couldn't get a lot of the older ones because of that yep. warehouse fire that destroyed most of them. Mm -hmm. But now you now on um the BBC streaming app, I can't think of the name of the moment. Uh, BritBox yeah. on BritBox, you you can watch all of them. They re, they they were able, able to recover every single one now from fans having videos yep. and whatnot. Yep. Which is fucking incredible. That's just yeah. fan service that oh, these okay. fans actually have all that. I, like, I love the guy who didn't want to give them up, though. Did you hear about that? The guy didn't want to no, give I didn't. them tapes. Yeah, he's like, the BBC went in and they're like, we need your tapes. And he's like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that's baller. That That's awesome. And the guy's like, no. Nah. I mean, I would have been like, you can copy them, but I want them fucking back and they yeah, better not I be broken. They, <laughs> I think they made copies and gave them back to him, but he was scared that they were going to just like ruin them or something, you know? Oh, I mean, and if you have a piece of history that is erased from history, unless you, unless you, if, if you're the person that has something, then yeah, I would pull off some money. I'd be like, how much are we talking? Like, yeah, I, 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 I could be persuaded, yep. but. And Amanda, you may be a few. Yeah, you are older than me because I know Harley is too. So you're older than me. But <laughs> your next matchup, though, is a female powerhouse matchup. It's number 29 ranked Kara Zor L from Supergirl versus number nine Sally Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun. Ah. Mm. Uh... So it's it's Kara Zor -El from the CW Supergirl, not like uh, that's, the, that's the only TV version of Supergirl I know of. So yeah, okay, because there's also um, um, from the seventies, eighties no, movie, was, yeah, uh, um, um, Laura Vander something. Oh, on Smallville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure this, they put the show, they put the show name as Supergirl, so I'm pretty sure they're talking about yeah, uh, Melissa bon ben Benoist. Well, I've only watched a handful of Supergirl episodes, um, but I've watched every episode of Third Rock, and 
I love, I just love that cast. So we're going to go with Sally. We're going to go with Sally. Oh, I've watched every episode of Supergirl as it was airing. I love that show. The CW did such a good job with their little DC verse. See, I like most of the DC verse, but it was one of the ones where um, I just wasn't home when that was on because I was on my way to work most of that time. So I didn't catch it. Um, mm. I've watched a lot of them since then, but it's still one of the ones that I, I have more of an emotional attachment to. Oh. Third Rock. Watch it for Lana Luther. Oh, yeah, because uh, John Cryer is uh, um, Luthor. Not in that. Oh yeah, in that show he is. Yeah, that, that's the show where he. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's not. In, he's not in it for like seasons. Uh, yeah. Lana Luther's in. Lana Luther's in from the first season. Okay. And she is so hot, so hot. Yeah. I, but, I, yeah. Now she's Tila. So. <laughs> yeah. True. But that means your next matchup, and Lonnie, this is for you if you're still watching, buddy. It's an animation matchup, and yo, you're gonna hate this one. It's number 28 ranked The Great Gazoo from Flintstones versus number 8 Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes. You know, it's Marvin the Martian. It's, <laughs> I, I, think, I think The Great Gazoo kind of killed the Flintstones. That was, that was their scrappy-do. So I'm going to go with Marvin the Martian. <laughs> I could see that, but I mean, him calling... Fred, dumb dumb all the time, just made me laugh. So, <laughs> but uh, I can't remember who did the voice, but they did a great voice on a great kazoo. But I, I'm I'm a Marvin the Martian guy, I like that. So, oh, I grew up. Yeah, I grew I grew up a lot doing fucking Marvin the Martian classic. Oh, yeah. He's one of the he's one of the worst conquerors of any planet in existence. But I mean, he's just classic. Oh, uh, did you ever watch him when they did uh, the Duck Dodgers when he's the bad guy against Duck? Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's mm -hmm. a great cartoon too. So yeah, I, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with him. Go with Marvin the Martian. You mean Duck Dodgers of the 31st century? Yeah, but <laughs> but that means Marvin's gonna be facing either number 27 Max Evans of Roswell fame or number seven ranked Zim of Invader Zim. Zim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Zim. you, that's God. Easy, that's easy enough. Zim. Oh, uh, yeah. Th that, and I've never, like I said, I've only watched a handful of Roswell, so I couldn't tell you the first thing about that. But I've, I've watched Zim. So. <laughs> the guy, I like the guy who plays Max in the reboot, but I never, I don't know who he plays him in the original even, so I, it was too early in the 90s for me to actually want to watch a teen drama. But yeah. I was watching Vader Zim at that time, probably. So, <laughs> but... <sighs> he... Uh, Another alien who was supposed to be a just conqueror, but sucked at his job. But, well, going to have a chance to take down another character from the same show in this one. And I think they're going to get taken down personally, but we'll see. Because number 26 ranked Tess Harding from Roswell versus number 6 ranked Mork from Mork and Mindy. Robin Williams. Jeez. Wow. No. Mork. <laughs> I know. Mork. The fact that it's number six, the fact that he's number six ranked on this makes me fucking shudder. She but, should be top three. Should be top three. But, well, um, and I don't know the top three are. I, top three. To, uh, wait, wait till you hear the top three, then tell me that. But we'll tell you, yeah. then tell me, because <laughs> top three are oof, all high tier. But okay, okay. we're getting closer. Okay. The next matchup, number 25. Not sure if it's pronounced. Chiana or Kiana from Farscape going against number five ranked Martian Manhunter from Justice League Unlimited. Oh, God. John Jones. Uh, as much as I like Farscape, uh, Martian Manhunter, especially on uh, Justice League Unlimited, was great. That was uh, great casting. Phil Lamar doing the voice. Yeah. Yep. Phil Lamar is the master. But... Yes, he is. Holy crap. I didn't think anybody's gonna beat Farscape because it's been Farscape, Farscape. Then you like this one. I'm like, oh no, Martian Manor, Martian Manor. So, which I'm happy at least one comic book person made in here because I'm pretty sure. Actually, now there's, there's there's at least another one. There's gotta but, be. I'm I'm gonna guess. I I think I know who number one is. The alien you, living you, among us for for comic books. You don't. 
you don't actually know what number one is. But number the next matchup, because Martian Manhunter, funny enough, will face Mork in the next round. But next matchup is a tricky matchup. It's number twenty four, Doctor from Star Trek Voyage versus number four ranked Tipol from Star Trek Enterprise. Well, the doctor on Voyager is a hologram, so he's not even an alien. And T'Pol is, a, yeah, we're going to go with T'Pol because she's actually an alien and not a hologram. <laughs> and, yeah, I, yeah. Jolene Delaney, I don't know what. too. That's uh, it's a hard one to pass up. So, <laughs> Well, that means T'Pol is going to... Either way, this next one goes. The poll's going to have a fucking matchup and a half for them. <laughs> but the, the, the next matchup is... And I hate this matchup. I hate it. Number 23 ranked Hanging Kodos from The Simpsons. Versus number 3 ranked The Doctor from the Doctor, Doctor Who. Doctor, jeez. I... I, I... Duvian, I love me some Doctor Who, and uh, I, I I like Kang and Kodos, but they're only good on the uh, um, what Treehouse uh, of Horrors, t- t- Treehouse of Horror stuff. Um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, the Doctor has almost always been good, so we'll just go with the Doctor. All right, and well, speaking of the Doctor, I don't think this character is gonna make it out of this matchup, <laughs> but number 22 ranked. Weeping Angel from Doctor Who versus number two ranked Clark Kent from Smallville. Superman, Clark Kent. Easy peasy. <laughs> Especially Smallville, Clark Kent. That, that was one of my favorite shows for, for 10 seasons, so I can't. I never actually watched that one fully. Oh, I, I know. I, I heard it's amazing. It just... I wasn't as big in the comic book stuff yet, and they, he didn't actually play Superman until like the final season. Like he was just a teenage boy for most of it. So yeah, he he never becomes Superman ever really. Well, he he I kind thought, of becomes in the last season, but it's never the true Superman. So isn't, isn't the last season like the Justice League season? Well, they also introduced the Justice League in earlier episodes too. But yeah. Oh. Yeah. They introduced Doomsday way early. They introduce uh, um, a lot of characters like way, way early. So yeah, uh, yeah. They they screw with the timeline in Smallville. So, uh, mm-hmm. well, your final matchup in round one to see who Superman's going to be facing next round. It might be an easy matchup this time, but it's going to make for a hard run. Pretty sure next round, it's number twenty one ranked Lisa from V, and going against. The number one ranked alien living among humans, according to Ranker, Spock from Star Trek OG. OG Spock, yes, yeah, that's a that's a no brainer on that one. OG Spock, which which means you're going to have Tom Welling versus Leonard Nimoy in the next round for your matchup. Oh, um, we'll yeah, think about that one for a minute. <laughs> Oh, you got a while to think about it because you got about no. Nope. <laughs> you got about eight other, uh, yeah, about eight at least eight other matchups to get to before that. So yep. you got time. But that means it is time to jump back into the beginning of round two on the other side. We're going back to the other side of the bracket, and it's number twenty ranked Nibbler from Futurama going against number nineteen ranked Anna from V. Anna from V. Duh. Marina Baccarin can't 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 fault her at all. So as much as I love Nibbler and stuff like that, I'm I'm I'm. It's bad that I'm I'm looking at the actress too and not just the alien. Um, well, I mean, it, it's 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 it is who played them that really makes them mm-hmm. a good character or not. So you can't. I think I think like she's you... also one of the best parts of that show. It was not great the reboot of V, but she was a great part of that series. So. Oh. The re- I thought the reboot of V was pretty good. I actually got into that one for a while. I I, I got into it, but I, I was more into the old ones. But that's what I grew up on. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but that means that Anna will be facing in the quarterfinals either 
Number 38 ranked Sokozu from Farscape. Or number 17 ranked Worf from Star Trek Next Generation. That's what that'd be a tough one. Um, Worf. I, I like Worf. <laughs> oh, I love the... What the hell is it? I love I love the episode of Family Guy where they kidnap all the Next Generation yeah. cast. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. It's classic. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I, I, that I, I mean that you. that and the episode of Futurama where the the OG cast has been trapped on a planet by an alien fan for decade for a century, and they have and the Futurama cast ends up like rescuing them. <laughs> like, yep. fucking amazing. I, I love amazing. I love it when they steal uh uh what Leonard Nimoy's head and uh uh William, uh uh yes his head slides forward he goes all right front row or something like that. that's great <laughs> it's amazing but that means your next matchup is the first is I think maybe the only Trekky nightmare matchup in round two. Okay. It, number 36, Ezra Dox from Deep Space Nine versus number 15, Seven of Nine from Voyager. Seven of Nine. Uh, I, 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 I was not really into those last couple seasons of uh, DS9, and uh, I, I like Jedzia Dax better. So we're going to go with, uh, we'll go with Seven of Nine. Seven of oh Nine. Seven of Nine. Which means, in your final matchup in this, actually, no, not not your final matchup in this side of round two, um, but to face seven to nine, it's either going to be number fourteen, Dick Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun, or number thirteen, Aaron Sun from Farscape. Oh. <sighs> mm. The Suns are facing off. Yeah. Oh man. Um Dick Solomon. I just he's so much funny. He's so funny. Oh my god. I just watched rewatched the episode where he's wearing leather pants and that that is one of the best episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I really got to binge that show because I only saw random episodes back in the day. I never really actually watched it all the way through. So uh, I I I, uh, um, I had somebody bring in the uh, all the box sets <coughs> on, on DVD, and I legitimately just sit there and watch them at the shop when I should have been working. So I rewatched it all the way through again. So damn nice. Yep. Well, your final matchup on this side of round two <laughs> is. Number 12, Roger from American Dad versus number 31, Diana from V. Diana from V. Damn. Diana from V. I, I love that show, and Diana's one of my favorite characters from that show. So. Uh, all right, I can respect it. Yeah. And she's but, also from the beginning to the end, so I have to say her, too. So. Uh, well, it's... It's your bracket, <laughs> not mine. And if it was mine, Roger would be going to the final fucking four without a doubt. But <laughs> I, his, the first couple seasons he was hilarious, but once they started putting him in disguises and having having to do different disguises every episode, Ricky Sanchez. <laughs> like, oh my god! Like his some of his characters are so fucking amazing, and then when they all like break free and like become their own personalities, it's just like. Pure mayhem, ama oh, amazingness. Yeah. Love Roger, but that's all right. Maybe I'll get some redemption in this first matchup in the other side of round two. And it's number 10, Zoidberg from Futurama versus number nine, Sally Solomon from Third Rock in the Sun. Sally. Sally. I, I love Third Rock, so that's that's going to bump Zoidberg down a little bit, but yeah. it's really close. Really. Hasn't Zoid, hasn't Zoidberg been dumped down enough in life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's okay because I can't be disappointed in this one. I really can't because you have an animation matchup to see who's going to face Sally, and it's number eight ranked Marvin the Martian or number seven ranked Zim. Oh man, both of them want to conquer the world. Um. One's a slightly better at it, maybe, I guess. I mean, Zim's slightly better at it because he actually has 
plans and yeah. Mar- Marvin, the Mar- Marvin the Martian just stomps out with his gun and tries to shoot people. <sighs> and gets fooled by a fucking rabbit. So Yeah, let, let's go with Zim. Let's go with Zim. Because uh, that, that, that's the one I've watched the most recently. So we're going to go Zim. So. Oh, just the theme song from that. I mean, the, the movie they did wasn't great, but you're not going to match the original 90s-ness of it. But. No, no. Exactly. Oh. And that means your next matchup. I hate this matchup. I really do. Number six, Mork from Mork and Mindy versus number five, Martian Manhunter. Oh. John Johns. John Jones. Um, yeah. I'm going to say Martian Manhunter. As much as I like Mork and, and like Robin Williams, I really like the character Martian Manhunter. Because not only that, I like him in the comic books. I like him in, you know, yeah. So. Oh, I, I, I since I, lo- I loved him since the first episode of the original Justice League cartoon. Mm-hmm. Like when the whole, the whole, I think the whole second or third episode was about like his battle on his planet between the white and the green. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Actually, it might have been the first episode even, I think, that started that off, but. Yeah, no. That uh, classic. Yeah. But that mean that means John Jones is gonna be it's gonna be facing either number four ranked to Paul from Star Trek Enterprise or number three ranked the Doctor from Doctor Who. Oh Doctor. Uh just the Doctor. I, I'm I'm Way more of a Hoovian than I am a Trekkie, so let's just go the Doctor. Just yeah, I'm going to put a trigger. I'm going to, I'm going to put a trigger warning beginning this episode for Trekkies. I swear to God. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. that means the final matchup in round two, the one you've been dreading. Oh yeah, I've been thinking about this one since we started the second round. Ugh. It is going to be number two ranked Clark Kent. Of Smallville fame for, versus number one ranked Spock of the Star Trek universe. Oh, jeez. <sighs> mm. uh, let's go Spock. Uh, let's go Spock. And Spock gets the win. Oh, Spock. Let's go Spock. I'm not going to lie. I am more of a Martian Manhunter fan than a Superman fan. So... But that's going to suck in this next round, too. <laughs> well, that means it's time to go into the dreaded quarterfinals. Oh. Oof, oof. Only three matchups on each side of the bracket. And the first one is number 19, Anna from V versus number 17, Worf from Star Trek The Next Generation. Worf. I, I, Worf is just awesome i like Worf a lot and at this point i think actually v might be out of the bracket completely but nope we still got diana we'll... don't we oh yeah true yeah, uh out. no we don't nope i knocked diana out you knocked diana out at oh yeah uh oh no we tell we tell diana yeah she's just she's on the lower part of the bracket that is good that that doesn't really have round uh quarterfinal matchups that's gonna have a semi-final matchup okay but okay. Your next quarterfinal matchup is number 15, 7 of 9 from Star Trek Voyager versus number 14, Dick Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun. Dick Solomon still. I, 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 I laugh at that show every time I watch it, so we're still going to go with that. Dick Solomon. Which means the other side of the quarterfinals, your first matchup is... Number nine, Sally Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun versus number seven, Zim from Invader Zim. Uh, Zim. Which means... I do too. Which means Zim moves on to face uh, most likely his destroyer the next round. (laughs) But it's either number five, Martian Manhunter from Justice League Unlimited or number three, the Doctor from Doctor Who. Oh, god dang it. I didn't think about how dreadful this one was going to be. I know, right? 
I know this is gonna this is gonna sound cheesy. Um, I'm gonna say the doctor because Martian Manhunters never made me cry, and the doctor has brought a tear to my eye. So we're gonna go with the doctor. I can respect it. Yeah. Well, that means the quarterfinals are over, and you have some fun semifinals and finals that you're gonna have to do here. But the uh, first semifinal, the first semifinal matchup is number 17, Worf from Star Trek Next Generation versus number 14, Dick Solomon from The Rock and the Sun. Uh, Dick, Dick Solomon. Just, I'm going with Dick. <laughs> That's a horrible He's thing. He's going with... He's going with Dick, ladies and gentlemen. Going but going with the big D. But uh <laughs> that means that Dick Solomon is gonna be in your final four. And well, actually I guess final six, I should say, for this one. But the other side of the semifinals for the top of the bracket is number seven, Zim from Invader Zim versus number three, the Doctor. 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 <sighs> More emotional attachment to the doctor than Sim, even though I like Sim. Oh, uh, I, I get it. Trust me. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's only a couple seasons of Zim. There are sixty years of Doctor Who to love. So exactly, exactly. And that means, well, actually, you have your final four. But let's do the since we haven't touched the bottom in a minute. Let's do the bottom final first, and it's going to be number thirty-one, Diana from V. Versus number one ranked Spock from Star Trek Universe. Oh, Spock, as much as I like Diana, Spock. Yet again, it's sixty some years of Star Trek of Spock, and okay. yeah, I like I've liked almost every version of Spock that they've had, even uh, the Zachary Quintos and the uh, um, the new one from uh, Strange New Worlds. So he's also Gregory Peck's like grandson, so he's got that voice. So. Yeah, I I I personally love Spock in the animated series. Oh yeah, God, that's one of my. I love that, that show. That used to that, be my that, favorite Star Trek show was the Star Trek the animated series. I'm sorry. I mean the the, the episode with him as a kid with his uh, like yeah. dog like creature like yep. fucking incredible. That that brings a tear to your eye. That episode. Oh yeah, that was that was hard, man. I watched that because that was that I I did not see when it first came out because that was seventy five. I was like one. So yeah. I watched that later on, and yeah, was it Machaya and Chaya was the name of the the? Yeah, the I think so. Yeah, it wasn't Oof. tomorrow's yesterday or something like that, or yesterday's tomorrow or something. Yeah, yesterday's tomorrow, mm-hmm. but that means your finals matchup for the top half of the bracket oh. is number is number fourteen, Dick Solomon, Third Rock from the Sun versus number three, the Doctor from Doctor Who. Doctor. As much as I like Dick Solomon, Doctor, easy on that one. Well, I'll let you do your third, fourth place matchup first because the grand finale matchup is going to be fucked. Oh, I'm right telling you. Yeah. So, so your third and fourth place matchup is either number 31, Diana from V, or number 14, Dick Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah, I said Dick. So, yeah, we got Dick. Yep. Which means Dick slides into third place. Giggity. And Diana gets placed back and forth. The Dick took her down, as many a favorite alien. <laughs> but your final matchup, and this I'm pretty sure anybody on Earth would dread this matchup right now. It's, oh, I mean, okay, except for hardcore of either fan base, but it is number one, it was ranked. Spock of the Star Trek universe versus number three ranked Doctor from Doctor Who. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, crap. Um, let's go. Let's go, Spock. Oof. Because I've What's like. Me? I have liked every version of Spock. 
I've only I've liked most of the versions of the Doctor. So yeah, it, well, it's this much. It's it's fifty one and forty nine percent. It's 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 probably not even that. It's probably like fifty point five percent to forty nine point five percent. Uh, yeah, I I can respect it. I mean, uh, I so, get that, that 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 logic does make sense. I mean, Leonard Nimoy played that one character for 50, 60 years, and mm -hmm. the Doctor had to be changed. Yep, 15, 16 times now. So yeah, yeah. at least because you know I liked Hartnell. I wasn't a big fan of the second Doctor. Uh, oh, I love him. Of the third Doctor, I liked because his he was more like a a suave secret agent guy. And then Tom Baker was the one I grew up on. The fifth uh, doctor I uh, thought was okay. Um, but the sixth doctor, Colin Baker, I wasn't a big fan of. And uh, yeah, Sylvester McCoy, unfortunately kind of got shafted because that's when they started um, shutting everything down. So yeah, I don't think he got the credit he deserved. And then Paul McGann, who I don't think he got any credit because all he did was the uh, uh, made for TV movie and then a yeah. couple of shorts. And then we got, then of course we got tenant, we got Smith and we got uh, Capaldi, which are three of my favorite versions of the doctor. Um, and then the war doctor was uh, John hurt. No. Yeah. Yeah. John hurt, John hurt. And then, uh, uh I wanted, I really, really wanted to like um, the 13th Doctor because I like her and other stuff, but I don't think they knew what to do with her. So I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, but I did appreciate what they did for it. But I just think that one just wasn't well written. So I... Yeah. I, I'm going with Spock. Because Spock's only had I, like one bad outing. And that was... I <laughs> I've yet, I've yet, I've yet to see any of the new Doctor Who. I refuse to watch it until I finally catch up on the old Doctor Who. See, I, I need to get caught up on the last season of of um, the female Doctor because I watched that and I haven't watched anything with the new. And I also haven't seen anything since they brought David Tennant back for the specials. And then, yeah, yeah, I haven't watched that because I didn't watch the last season of. Uh, um, why can't I remember her name for some dumb reason? Jodie Whittaker. I, I haven't, I haven't oh watched. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched the. I haven't finished watching the Jodie Whittaker stuff. So. Uh, well, that means that your final four for tonight are Diana from V, thirty-one ranked in fourth place. Number fourteen ranked Dick Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun for third. The Doctor, the third ranked on this whole bracket from Doctor Who in second place, and of course. The number one ranked Spock from Star Trek Universe took home first place, which as damn well he should. Spock! But, I mean, uh, even Zachary Quinto can get it for that, because Spock, he did an amazing job as a young Spock. Oh, yeah, he's great. And like I said, Gregory Peck's son on, on uh, um, the new stuff, on Strange New Worlds, he's really good, too. And... Uh, mm. Yeah, I, I, I did not want to like Strange New Worlds as much as I do, and I absolutely love it. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, honestly. I oh. I started I started watching Discovery when it first came on, but then I kind of stopped watching all Star Trek stuff for a minute just because life got busy. But yeah, uh, I, uh, um, I was I I <clears throat> Discovery's hit and miss for me. Um, and I guess season two of Discovery is pretty much season zero for Strange New Worlds. So, yeah, and it's got a great cast. Anson Mount as as Pike, he's awesome. Um, yeah, he did a great job. Rebecca Romay Stamos as a uh, um, number as a uh, uh, number one, um, which I, I I wanted them to do because at one time because Nigel Barrett um, played both number one and Nurse Chapel. And the rumor was was that she was going to play both characters, and it was never going to be, never going to be referred to. So I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. So, um, and then they make fun of that because uh, um, her husband is um, uh, Commander Ransom on uh, uh, Lower Decks. So, yeah, that that that's funny too. I actually love Lower Decks. That's a great show. So. 
That would have been one if he would have threw with those in. I would have been probably had problems. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I will say this has been one hell of a run for this bracket for the first time, and I'm happy I got a, someone that actually knows all these shows to do it. And the only one I didn't know was, was Roswell, but I knew all the other ones, so. Yeah, and it's it's the original Roswell. I don't give a fuck if we get taken out early. But <laughs> if it was a reboot, we'd have some things to discuss here. But it's not, and I mean, there are so many. And yes, folks, I realize there's a lot of aliens missing from this bracket, but there, then we had 40 in this list, and I wasn't trying to make this a huge, huge, like, three-part bracket, because it just, it would have just been every character from Star Trek, basically. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, let the let let ranker people make this bracket and I'll make this ranking and I'll just fucking play with it. But I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. But cool. tell them, Paul, where can they find everything you do? Where can they find your opinions and other regards? Okay. I can, I, can, I can do my spiel here. Um, you can find me on uh you can find the captain on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, TikTok with my show Talk and Roll. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I do four shows because I'm a crazy person. Uh, I do group therapy, which is my interview show where I talk to just about anybody who interests me. Uh, so I've had actors, actresses, comic book writers, artists, uh, directors, um, wrestlers, you name it. I've had it on that show. Uh, Sci Fridays, which I show sci fi shows from back in the day. Um, Saturday morning serials, which is my Saturday morning show. Uh, and then talk and roll is my show where I talk heavy metal and rock and roll and music period with different bands. Um, then of course, uh, you can find, are you game? My comic book store and video game store. It's a R E letter U G A M E. Uh, that's on f Facebook and you can find me. You can see stuff through that through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and all that funness for me. Um, and uh, you can also find me at conventions and stuff like that because I do conventions and all that funness. So if you see me, just say hi. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. Say yeah. hi. Yep. And all my listeners and watchers, you know where you can find me. You know. If you don't, just shame. Shame on you. Shame on your house. Shame on your cow. All that good stuff. But if you don't know, check the outro on Spotify land. If you're watching live, just follow me where you're watching live. And then search similar names on everything else and you'll find it. There you go. Simple. Mm -hmm. So, till next time, fans, I believe I will be back on, I want to say, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I have a actual, reg I have a regular paranormal interview on Wednesday and Saturday morning, early. So, come back for that. It'll be a fun couple days. And till next time, remember, the world's not normal. Never will be. And we're talking about aliens, so... Fuck normal. <laughs>